Did you know that there is an app called runp.com with the whole purpose of the app is to tell you the best times to run and pee during a movie without missing anything? Huh, interesting. Well, I mention this because the movie producer Alfred Hitchcock, who made the movie Psycho about the Norman Bates Motel and also why I can never take a shower and close my eyes again for the rest of my life, made the following statement. The length of a film should be directly related to the endurance of the human bladder, which begs the question, what anatomical structures are responsible for the endurance of the human bladder? Well, when you're watching a movie and you've got your big gulps and you're drinking and drinking and drinking, your kidneys are filtering all that extra fluid, and then the urine is flowing from the kidney down the ureters bilaterally into the urinary bladder so that by halfway through the movie, shing, this happens. Your bladder's filling with urine, which begs another question. Why don't we wet our pants halfway through the movie? And the reason why is for a few anatomical structures. First of all, this one called the internal urethral sphincter. It's found at the neck of the bladder in both males and females, and it's composed of smooth muscle. And as a result, it is involuntary. It's contracting to keep urine within the bladder. We also have this one called the external urethral sphincter, which gets its name because it's closer to the outside of the body, but this is composed of skeletal muscle. This skeletal muscle is a thickening in the urogenital diaphragm in both males and females, and this is what's preventing you from urinating until you want to. And so what we see is this detrusor muscle, that's the main smooth muscle outside the bladder that relaxes when the bladder fills or it contracts when you're urinating, which then causes a reflex for the internal urethral sphincter to relax and open. And what happens then is urine starts pushing against your external urethral sphincter. So the only thing stopping you from urinating is this voluntary contraction of the external urethral sphincter. And so after a while, as urine keeps building up, you end up looking like this because you've really got to go to the bathroom. And so until you then uh, voluntarily relax the external urethral sphincter is when urine flows down the urethra and then out into the toilet, or if you're my son, the tree outside the junior high. Okay, so hello, we're going to talk about bladder and the innervation of the bladder and answer the questions, what innervates the detrusor muscle? internal urethral sphincter, and external urethral sphincter. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I am the noted anatomist. Okay, so first, let's talk about the sympathetic innervation of the bladder. And to do that, we'll take a look at these two neuron uh, schematic that we've talked about in the past. And we're going to focus on neurotransmitters and receptors in this tutorial. Well, there's our Simp pre, which stands for preganglionic sympathetic neuron. And so that is has a CNS origin within the spinal cord. And going to the bladder, it's primarily that lower thoracic and upper lumbar cord. And we're going to focus on that L2 level. And if we take a cross section through that, we can see that the sympathetic pre preganglionic sympathetic neuron arises in the lateral horn. And so what happens then is we see this axon is this impulse travels along that preganglionic sympathetic neuron, releasing acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. And this occurs in the preaortic ganglion aplexus. So when it binds to the nicotinic receptor, we have this impulse continue. So this is a cholinergic receptor because it binds acetylcholine. Specifically in all autonomic ganglia, it's a nicotinic receptor. And so what happens then is uh, the continuation of this impulse along the postganglionic sympathetic neuron occurs. This neuron cell body is found inside the preaortic ganglia plexus. In this case, it's the hypogastric plexus. All right, so let's continue. So this impulse continues along the postganglionic sympathetic neuron, releasing norepinephrine into that synaptic cleft. And now norepinephrine is going to bind to two different structures. It's going to bind in the bladder to the detrusor muscle and the internal urethral sphincter. And watch what happens. It's going to go to the detrusor and that internal urethral sphincter. And so what happens then is they bind. See what happens? Shing! The detrusor muscle relaxes and the internal urethral sphincter constricts. So the bladder can fill with urine, but it doesn't void because the internal urethral sphincter stays constricted. Um, the detrusor muscle has adrenergic receptors because it binds adrenaline or epinephrine, norepinephrine in this case. Specifically, it's a beta adrenergic receptor. And on the internal urethral sphincter, this is an adrenergic receptor, but it's an alpha adrenergic receptor. All right, so 
in review. Norepinephrine binds to beta adrenergic receptor on the detrusor muscle and the bladder expands. Norepinephrine binds to alpha adrenergic receptor and causes the internal urethral sphincter to constrict. This is what prevents you from urinating. All right, let's talk about parasympathetic innervation of the bladder and the neurotransmitters and receptors in looking at this two neuron pathway. So first of all, there is our parapre, which stands for preganglionic parasympathetic neuron. And it arises in the central nervous system, specifically the sacral cord. And let's just take for kicks the S3 level of the spinal cord. And we take a cross section. And there it is, the cell body arising from that lateral horn in the sacral cord. And so this impulse travels along the preganglionic parasympathetic neuron. And then it's going to release acetylcholine into that synaptic cleft. And this is an intramural ganglion. This is actually in the wall of the bladder that this is occurring. When acetylcholine binds, it's a nicotinic receptor, which is a type of cholinergic receptor where we find in all autonomic ganglia. And so uh, now we have this postganglionic parasympathetic neuron that's going to continue this impulse. And so the impulse calls, falls along the parasympathetic neuron and releases acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft which then binds to two different structures. It's going to bind to the detrusor muscle and the internal urethral sphincter, causing the following. Shing! We see that where the detrusor muscle contracts, forcing urine down, and then the internal urethral sphincter relaxes and allowing urine now to flow into the urethra. And so let's just review that for a second, and what we see is the following. Acetylcholine binds to muscarinic receptors on the detrusor muscle, and the bladder contracts. Also, acetylcholine binds to muscarinic receptors on the internal urethral sphincter, causing it to relax. All right, now let's talk about somatic voluntary innervation. And so what we see is the following. The external urethral sphincter is constricted. Why? Because acetylcholine is bound to it. So to prevent voiding the bladder until you're ready, the pudendal nerve is innervating the external urethral sphincter. So now watch what happens is that we see, oh, the impulse travels all the way down. And so what happens is acetylcholine is broken down by enzymes and then another acetylcholine molecule binds to that nicotinic receptor and causing the external urethral sphincter to constrict. Okay, it's constricted. So this is a cholinergic receptor and it's a nicotinic receptor. But there's a difference between nicotinic receptors in autonomic ganglia and on muscles in this neuromuscular junction, okay? So it is a nicotinic receptor, but it functions differently with, pharmaco with pharmacological drugs for the most part. All right, so now to avoid the bladder, the pudendal nerve stops innervating the external urethral sphincter, and so what we see is the following. It dissolves, or not dissolves, the, an enzyme breaks down the acetylcholine, and if the somatic pudendal nerve does not innervate it anymore, the external urethral sphincter relaxes. So watch what happens. That muscle relaxes and urine voids out the urethra. So bladder innervation now, in a nutshell. What we see is the following. We've got norepinephrine binds to beta adrenergic receptors and that presents not voiding the bladder, meaning urine stays in the bladder. But then we have acetylcholine that binds to the muscarinic receptors it voids the bladder in an involuntary fashion. And then finally, to void voluntarily, acetylcholine binds to those nicotinic muscular receptors, and now you void the bladder voluntarily. And my friends, that's the bladder in a nutshell.